Hello friends, this is Barbara from Wigs and Fluff. Now today I'm going to talk to you about how to react when people, you want to tell them that it's a wig or if they ask if it's a wig or they ask several other related questions. And the first thing you might hear from someone that you're encountering is, I love your hair. Your hair looks fabulous. So what do you say? Well, thank you. You say thank you and you accept the compliment and you go about, you try to return the compliment. I like your top. Your top looks absolutely fabulous. Another comment that you might get on your wig is, who's your hairdresser? Your hair looks great. You can tell them I go to different hair salons or I'm afraid I do my own hair or um, I have a friend who does it, something like that. Um, another comment that you might get is, did you change your hair? So if they come at you with saying, did you change your hair? That doesn't put you on the spot necessarily. You can tell them, well, I just washed it or I just had hair extensions put in or I'm trying something different and so forth and so forth and ask them, put them on the defense of themselves and say, do you like it? Like that. So that's another way that you can deal with people who are asking about your wig. If you really don't want to come right out and say, it's a wig. Um, another, another comment that you might get is, your hair looks good today. It looks different. So again, you could claim hair extensions. What do you think? And toss it right back to them. You could say, I changed the color and toss it right back to them. Do you like it? Do you think it looks good? Um, suppose you want to tell them the truth. Suppose you just want to be upfront. Um, you can just say, I've got a hair piece. What do you think? I'm experimenting with different ones. What do you think? You could say, thanks so much, but it's a wig. That's what I do. Thanks so much, but it's a wig. It's not actually my hair. It's a topper. Or you could say, it's just a wig. Um, when you try to hide the truth about the fact that you're wearing a wig and you lie about it, that's embarrassment and you should have more confidence in wearing your wig than that. It looks great. All wigs look great. You will come to the point where you're going to enjoy telling people that it's a wig. I do. I get a real kick out of telling people I'm wearing a wig and they go, you are? That looks so real. It looks great. So some people might have a lot of questions and they want to pepper you with all kinds of questions. So answer them. They're just curious, not being mean. They just want to know for themselves, you know, maybe I, my hair is getting a little sparse on the crown. And uh, so maybe I might want to consider wearing a wig too. So what do you think? So ask them why, not just tell them. I have hair loss. If they ask why, just say, I have hair loss or alopecia, or I went through a procedure or whatever the case may be, and just be honest with them. Now, if you're on a date or if you have a significant other that you haven't told yet, you're going to find something out. Men are going to be more understanding than women are. Men are going to be really understanding. In fact, nobody's going to condemn you for wearing a wig and nobody's going to really laugh because hair loss happens to a lot of people and um, even men. So men are going to go through the same thing. In fact, they go through hair loss way more than women do. So they'll probably come back and say, I'm losing my hair too. We'll grow old together, losing our hair. <laughs> Something like that. You don't need to tell the whole story of your medical issues 
or your hair loss story to somebody, you don't need to bore them with all of that stuff. You can just quickly say, I have hair loss or alopecia or something, and that it's, it's you know, this is what I do. And it's fabulous and it's fun and it's fantastic. So another thing that you can do is practice what you're going to say because eventually, inevitably, you're gonna come up against this situation and you're going to have to say something to somebody. So you can say simply, it's a topper. You can just tell them that. Or you can say, it's an extension of my hair. Or you can say some other things, but find your one-liner that you're comfortable with Practice it in the mirror with yourself and until you're comfortable with it because it's going to happen. So those are some suggestions for when you come upon that moment when you have to talk to somebody and about your wig. They've noticed that your hair is blonde, brunette, red every day, and they want to know why. What are you doing? And they've noticed that your hair just looks so fabulous. What a beautiful color. What a beautiful do. It's just gorgeous. And they want to know who your hairdresser is. Be prepared because they're going to ask questions. But there should be no fear. There should be no fear and no concern and no worry because nobody really cares in the end. It's your head. And if you have an issue that's causing you problems, then that issue is your own and not theirs. And you need to own that and you need to be proud of your wigs and enjoy them, no matter what anybody else has to say about it. Because after all, we are independent women these days and we can do what we wanna do and we solve problems. And this is a problem. This is a sol solution to a problem that many of us have. So those are my thoughts. You're going to come upon these times and people are going to ask questions. Just be prepared and don't be afraid because nobody's going to laugh. In fact, more often than not, people are going to want to know which kind of wig is it and where do you buy wigs and so forth and so on. And you can be a help. You can be a blessing to that person. So. Try to make it a situation where you can actually help that person and be a blessing. And you can always say, well, in the working world, I really am pushed for time to get out the door, so I just wear a wig every day for comfort. You can say it that way. So it's whatever you feel comfortable with doing, but practice it back and forth in the mirror so that you know what you're going to say and you're prepared for those moments. Now I want to talk to you about something else. I want to talk to you about joy at Christmas time. Now I have on my True Story shirt today, there's a little baby Jesus here in the manger and the star, True Story. And I wear this shirt for joy, for the joy of the season, because it also tells people that it's a true story. So I like to wear this shirt. Christmas declares joy to the world. The Lord is come. So that's a, an opening for us to be able to tell the story of Jesus and his birth. So relate that story every time you get a chance. God's desire is that we would experience the good tidings of great joy proclaimed by the angels 2,000 years years ago. It's his will for us to experience that joy. And the Bible says, for unto us a child is born, and his name is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Think on those things. This There is joy in the scriptures. So take time this season to read the story, to read the story, the true story, of Christmas. Joy in Christmas carols. There's joy in singing those Christmas carols. So take time to sing the carols and make up the words so everyone will know the words. Just type them up and run them off and make a little booklet 
and sing carols with your children and your grandchildren. I know everybody has some favorite ones that they like to sing. And then listen to music, listen to carols, listen to Christmas music, listen to Christian music. Joy in the Christmas story, share it with friends and in your Christmas cards as well. Joy of salvation. This is the true gift at Christmas because Jesus came and he lived and he died for us as a gift to pardon us from our sins so that we might live with him in heaven one day. So it is the gift of the Christmas season, salvation. That is the true gift. That baby was born for one purpose, and that purpose was to die for your sin and mine. So that's my story of joy for the season in the scriptures, in the carols that we sing, in the Christmas cards that we send. Read the Bible, sing the songs, and be joyful this season. And that's my story for today, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.